I appreciate every single one of you for tuning in today and swinging through. Today we're going to try and figure out um, what's in it for me. But before we get into it, if you are new to the channel, thank you for tuning in. Make sure you become officially a part of the squad by hitting that subscribe button and that bell notification down bottom so we can keep each other motivated daily as we tackle self-improvement, mentality, social circles and careers, and so much more. Excited to get in this one as I always am. Now, without further ado, let's get into it right now. It seems like we consistently want to know what's in it for me right? What's in it for you, right? Because I always want to know that, hey, there's some light at the end of the tunnel. There's something that I'm going to get on the back end. But let me tell you something. If you constantly go about your life concerned about what you're going to get on the back end, then up front, you're worried about the wrong thing. You're focused on the wrong thing. You know, I read a really good book a few years ago. It's called Super Rich. It was written by Russell Simmons. And in this book, uh, he talks about how he became successful in business life, right? As all of you guys know, he sold Duck Jam for billions of dollars, him and Rick Rubin. And basically, he talks about how he managed his first act, Curtis Blow. And they were promoting his music and how he had to talk to Curtis Blow. And they both basically had to sacrifice. But also how it's going to take that in order for you to get the leverage that you need to be in high demand for people to want to pay you for your talent. Now, I'm a believer that this is how we should go about life. We all have talents. We all have things that we're incredibly gifted at. My question is, do you have the patience to get there in the first place? We all want people to buy into our gift, right? Not only our craft, our vision, you know, our product, our service, our background, our skills in music or education, but you need to be willing to sell those people on you first. They need to understand that, hey, I'm coming from a place where I know and have to have this. Like I need this in order for me to succeed. And I'm gonna put in the work that I have the determination to put in this work every single day to make another great product, to teach another new trick of the trade, right? To hold up my end of the bargain and be available when you need me. When you want another, you know, in this case, if you want another hit for, of music, right? You can't just be like, hey, I have this one thing. Is it scalable? And is it something that I can continue to grow from a business perspective? And can I handle more responsibility and not break from it? We have to start getting away from the idea that we immediately need something in return for a service we're providing. Because like, all right, so example, you're up for a promotion at work and your boss says, hey, I'm adding you to this plan, like this development plan to get you promoted, to get you to the next level, right? So you're super excited, right? Your immediate thought is probably what? Yeah, I'm about to get this kiss Like, well, yeah, but no. For now, it's just a plan, right? You need to prove yourself. That's why your boss said a plan to promote you, not, hey, you're promoted right now. And why? Because you need to show you can handle it through your work, through the challenges that you'll have to deal with. That's how it should go about whatever career choice that we have, right? Or whatever company that you're working for, or if you're an entrepreneur, it doesn't matter. Now, if you're working for yourself, you're always gonna feel like you deserve the most, right? You can possibly get out of any type of endeavor that you're involved in because you know I'm spending day and night working on this. It's me and it's a few different employees, right? So you want and need something in return. But my advice to you would be, and I read this in the book, if you aren't willing to give away your gift for free until you prove yourself, then you're not in it for the right reason. Take the end game out of this for a second because we all wanna be rich and super successful, but as you know, it won't come overnight. So what you need to do is make the sacrifice of your time and put your all into it. Like as if you're already making hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars because if you ain't gonna do it now, you think you're gonna be able to do that and maintain your level of success once you get to the level you wanna be at? Absolutely not. Now, yeah, eventually you'll get the nice house and the cars and the luxury vacations, but none of that stuff comes in the beginning. So let's use another example. Kevin Hart, famous comedian, right? Most of us know who he is. We all see him now as this huge comedian who sells out shows and does world tours and successful in movies, right? Just successful beyond all imagination. But none of us saw the nights when he wasn't successful years and years ago, 20 years ago, specifically when he was booed off stage at his first gig or working in crappy comedy clubs in Philly and Atlantic City being paid $50 a night, right? 
trying to make ends meet. We seem to always look at the end and say, that's what I want. But I would tell you that your beginning is more important than your end because if you make it through like he did, right, you have such a higher appreciation for that level of success. Now you look back at those dingy living situations and the $20 you had in your bank account or all the bills that you had or the second job you had to pick up as your hunger to never want to go back there again. I heard an interview recently uh, in a video that I watched with 50 Cent and he gets asked in the interview by the interviewer, why do you work so much? You have enough money to just go sit down, buy an island, chill out for the rest of your life. His response, I never want to go back. I'm too afraid. I never want to go back to the way I was living before, to the life of having nothing, to hustling just to make ends meet. That to me is the mindset of a hustler. That's the mindset of someone who has never settled into comfort. See, most of us want to get there so we can chill and do nothing. No, when you get there, you probably want to stay there, right? Which means your grind is even more important in the beginning because you're setting precedent for how you'll be once you reach the mountaintop. So the goal is to stay focused and stay committed to your process now of being better each day. But don't always expect something return immediately. It is a grind out here. It takes time to become successful. The question is, do you have the time to change your life and put in the grind work right now lay that foundation in order for you to get to the next level in the near future. Thank you guys for tuning in today. I always appreciate every single view, like, email, like it truly is super important to me and it keeps me motivated every single day on top of motivating myself. Make sure if you didn't already, you hit that subscribe button and that bell notification on your way out. I'll be back tomorrow with another one for you, but until I see you guys again,